Hey y'all, so in the last video we finished off by adding a third person camera crate to our project. So it should look something like this if you've been following along up to this point. Well in this video we're going to add an actual player model to our scene here. So instead of being a cube it's going to be an actual player model. Uh, it'll be a little blocky figure with a guy holding a flashlight. And then we're going to add a rotation to that player uh, player object. So whenever you face a current direction or start moving in a current direction, the player model, the object will turn and face in the direction that he's actively moving. Then we're just going to finish it off by adding a little spotlight to the player. So the flashlight is actually simulating some light. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start by adding an assets folder at the root level. So it should be right alongside your source folder and then navigate to the link in the description, uh, this link right here of the player model, which is a GLTF file. I'll have that in the description below. Go ahead and hit this download icon right here, this download raw file. And I'm opening up my file explorer on the left hand side and moving, let me exit that out, moving the GLTF file over into the assets folder here. So now we have imported our player model. Now navigate to the player.rs file and go to the spawn player system. Go ahead and comment out this PBR bundle here. We're not gonna use that. And now we're not gonna use these either anymore, at least for right now. And then we're gonna use something else called a scene bundle. So in the scene bundle, uh, we can actually use the same transform. So I'm gonna copy that from the PBR bundle. Uh, and then I'm gonna fill it in with the rest of the default parameters. And then in the beginning, I'm going to add another parameter called scene. Uh, and then this is going to be, I'm going to use the assets resource to load the player ob the player model that we just imported. So to do that, we actually need to add a different parameter to our system. And this is going to be the assets resource. So I like to call mine assets. It's actually like the asset server, but I like to call mine assets. Uh, and then res asset server, just like so. And then go back down into the scene, uh, the scene parameter value here, and write assets dot load player dot gltf hashtag scene capital S zero. Um, honestly, I don't know why you have to do this. Uh, if if you do know, please let me know in the description. I've just never looked into it. I just know that it's required. And also you'll notice that I didn't pass in the name of the assets folder here. Well, that's because the assets resource automatically looks at the root level into an assets folder. So you don't need to specify the assets folder. In fact, I think that would error out and it would say folder not found or um, file not found. Okay, so now that we have the player model loaded, let's go ahead and run this and see if we actually have correctly loaded it in. And there you go, you see our little our little player model here. And now you'll see what I mean by I'm he's not actually turning and facing the direction that he's moving, so he's just staying in one area. And we're gonna fix that right now. And now that I know that this works, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these comments here. and then scroll down to your player movement system, go to the bottom of it, and we're gonna add a little check here, actually, not right there, right in here. We're gonna add a check here to, uh, to see if the player has moved. And we're gonna do this, actually, let me write a little description. Rotate player to face direction he, direction he is currently moving. And then I'm going to say if direction dot length squared is greater than zero. And this is just checking if he's actually has moved at all. And if he has, then we're going to rotate the player transform with the look to function. And we're going to look to the direction, uh, look in the direction of the direction vector. And then we don't want to modify the the y value, so we're just going to pass in. Um, actually, no. What does this What does this do? Look to direction the up. We don't want to modify that, so we're just going to pass in uh, vec three y. And now, if we go ahead and run this, we should see a correct 
movement here. So I'm aiming in a different direction. And if I hit forward, boom, he rotates in that direction, rotates in that direction, rotates in that direction. Perfect. And if I hold it down and move, you'll see that he's doing that. Or left, right, back. Just play around with it. And then, uh, yeah, so that's exactly what we want. Now to finish this video off, let's go ahead and add a little spotlight to that little flashlight that he's holding. So to do that, we're going to create another variable up here and we're gonna say let flashlight equals um, spotlight bundle and we're just gonna pass in the default parameters for now. And then down here, this might look a little bit weird uh, but we're going to write commands right after the commands dot spawn statement. We're going to say dot with children. And then this is going to be a little closure here. I'm just going to call it parent. And then we're going to say parent dot spawn flashlight. So what this is doing, it's giving the flashlight entity the 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 same transform as its parent which in this case is the player so everything is relative to the player entity so now if we run this you're going to see that we have a little light in the front there it's a little bit vague you can't see it super well but you should be able to see it and then you'll see that it just travels along with the player perfectly, kind of right where that flashlight is too. So it looks pretty good even with the default parameters, but we will mess around with this in the next video. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you soon.